And what's up, you Long Island Retro Gaming Maniacs out there? It is another episode of the Long Island Retro Gaming Podcast. I am your new host, Mike Staub, and I hope you're ready because we have a really great episode for you today. I am so happy to be talking with Matt Papa from Inti Creates. And Matt Papa is a producer and the international affairs coordinator at Inti Creates, one of my favorite game developers around today and if you're not in if you're not in on the inti creates thing right now get in on it because the stuff they put out is amazing everything from blaster master zero one two and three uh, bloodstained curse of the moon bloodstained curse of the moon two and all the way back to the old Mega Man Zero games. I'm a big fan. Obviously, you can see, Matt, I've got a Marvel vs. Capcom cabinet behind me. So the Blue Bomber is very special to me and his friends. So I'm very experienced with the stuff that you guys done all the way back to like Mega Man, Mega Man 9 and 10. But thank you for being here. I really appreciate you doing this call from around the world because you're not in the States. You're in Japan, correct? That, that's right. Uh, it's, it's my pleasure. First of all, Michael, it's my pleasure to be here. Uh, I... I you guys at Long Island Retro are fantastic. I'm, I cannot wait to hopefully have the stars align one year and us to be able to actually like come out for that. That would be the bee's knees. Oh, we would love um, to have you. But uh, I, 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 I too am a fellow uh, Mega Man enthusiast. Uh, that, that, that little blue dude has impacted my life in so many ways. It's not even funny. Uh, I very much appreciate your MVC cabinet behind you. And yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, man, I'm just like you. I was a fan of Itty Create since... Mega Man Zero came out. Like, I remember being in high school, you know, booting up Mega Man Zero on my GBA and, like, watching the title screen come up. I'm like, who or what is Inti Creates? But I like Mega Man, so here we go. You know, I didn't really... And then, well, here we are. There you, there, there you go. I mean, that's, that's you know, that's a dream come true, right? To be able to work on... Work with a, a company that works on properties that you love. I think that's what any of us would we could only wish for. Yeah, it's pretty bonkers, in all honesty. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, man. So, first of all, before we start talking about the games, I hear that you have a rather interesting story of like how you got involved with Inti Creates. And uh, would you mind giving us a little little insight? A little sure, sure, I'd be happy to. Yeah, it's one of those like the stars aligned just right at the right times. Like, I honestly sometimes like look back. I'm like, how in the heck did <laughs> like how I don't even know how this could have possibly come to be like you couldn't have scripted this if you tried but um um I, I'll, I'll try not to get too long-winded with it but um you know so the first kind of link in the chain was meeting uh a guy you may know by the name of Keiji Inafune I think we're aware. Uh, the, the, yeah uh, for those of you who don't know he's been, he's not the creator of Mega Man but he's kind of like the cool uncle of Mega Man, like the godfather of Mega Man type type deal. Yeah. They're like, you didn't create him, but I mean, he took care of him for a really long time. And um, I met, I came in contact with him at New York Comic Con back in 2010. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. I'm an, I'm an East Coast boy too. Right around uh, the so, corner. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, I had actually just come back from working in Japan um, as like an English teacher. And uh, I found out he was going to be there. And as far as I knew, uh, that was the first time since I've been a fan of Mega Man and was going to conventions, you know, since I was like, I've been going to conventions since like 2002. And that was the first time that I was aware of that he was ever on the East Coast since I knew who he was. Uh, so I pulled everything together to go to New York Comic Con. And my, my, I had one goal, and that was to meet him. I didn't care what, what else. That I wanted to meet the man. That's all I wanted to do. Um, you know, keep in mind, of course, he was still at Capcom at the time. And so I'm there at New York Comic Con, and I'm just kind of wandering around the Capcom booth, you know, playing a demo here and there and just kind of existing in that space, right? And I'm just walking around. He had, he had like a signing later. So I knew I was going to get to at least shake the man's hand or just say hi and tell him thank you for all he's done and all that stuff. So I knew I was at least going to do that. But um, he, uh, I'm walking around, and I'd say about maybe 30, 45 minutes before his signing – He's just out on the Capcom show floor, just just kind of hanging out, just not talking to anybody, not doing anything, just sort of just taking it all in, I guess. Um, so I'm just like, oh crap, okay. Uh, all right, well, uh, summon up the you know, summon up the courage, man. It's it's, it's now or never, you know. Um, 
so I, uh, I, you know, summoned up all the courage I had and uh, went over and uh, said hello to him in Japanese. And uh, he was like, oh, he said, he, his exact words like, oh, Nihongo shaberun ya, which basically like in Osaka dialects, he's like, oh, wow, you speak Japanese. And I was like, yes, okay, we're in. All right, let's go. And we just, you know, I introduced myself and just, you know, told him how much I love Mega Man and, uh, you know, and just you know, basically, yeah, I was just gonna be like the you know the the sixty second. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And called Dave, but he started talking back to me, like asking me, like, oh, like, where did how did you learn Japanese? Like, you know, what is like? And we just started having this conversation about like just Mega Man and like Japan and like my experience there. And I told him because he's from the Osaka area too. Uh, so I told him how like oh I lived I was in Osaka and we were talking about all this stuff and it was amazing. And my goal was to get. Uh, all six copies that I had, Rockman one through six for Famicom. I had them all complete in box. And there was the only time besides when I had to move, they ever left my house. I, <laughs> because I, I hoped. I, I feel you. <laughs> I hoped uh, that he would sign at least one of them. And I, I casually mentioned that I had my collection with me, but I kind of just like tossed that in there a little bit. And we're just chatting, chatting. And he's like, well, what's this about a collection you said? And then I pull out Rockman six and he's like, <laughs> you can tell you're just like yeah all right I, I see what you're doing yeah and then i was just like i put that away and i was like well, i was like okay okay yeah yep yeah, yep yeah, okay i see what we're doing here i see this game all right let's go I'm, I'm in and by the time he got down to like rockman 2 which you know Mega Man 2 is my favorite game of all time so good period the end that was the quintessential life-changing game for me so he's like you know, talking about how like difficult the development was, and draws a little Mega Man on the on the back of the box for me, and I'm just like, he's such a nice dude, such a nice guy. I believe it. Um, you know, and then he had like then he signs my copy of one, and then what some other Japanese Capcom dude was like, oh, where'd you find that? That's really hard to find now. <laughs> <laughs> this whole conversation was like, what is happening to me? This is insane. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, then we you know we ways and i was just like oh my god this is so incredible and i'm so glad i came right and uh like there was just like a circle of people just watching everything that was happening there. and i felt so bad because like it was like you know he just people just watched this man sign all of my rock man games for me right and then this was literally right before his autograph signing and like yeah the, the comic con staff was like all right uh you know he's about to start signing if you want to meet him just go ahead line up whatever uh one article per person is allowed to be signed and i was like i'm gonna go <laughs> yeah, yes yeah yeah you gotta leave at that point i'm get getting out. out of dodge i'm getting out of dodge no way nope 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 um uh, but yeah that was just such an incredible experience and uh a couple years later um through a just wild bunch of circumstances i i was in this uh facebook group and somebody had messaged uh somebody had messaged them in japanese and they were like oh matt could you like translate this for us i'm like oh yeah sure whatever and i'm, I'm looking into this like facebook profile and like through like this weird like chain of facebook profile clicking i guess because that's a thing you could do back in 2012 2013 you can't really do that anymore um <laughs> i uh I stumbled, I stumbled upon a social media profile that looked like his. And I'm like, no, there's no way this is actually him. But I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Yeah. Maybe, 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 right? So I, I, I reached out to try to connect with him on social media. And on the off chance that he remembered me. Uh, turns out it was him. And he did <laughs> remember oh, me. Man. And this was like like two years at least after Comic Con. Yeah, right. Uh, so I was just like floored that he even remembered who I was. Um, and we eventually connected via social media, so by some miracle. And then through him, I uh, I connected with a bunch of other people from social uh, like from the game industry on social media. And, you know, when I came back to Japan in 2014, um, you know, my fian my fiance and I, we, we came over. We didn't really have like a big grand plan. You know, basically we came over, 
you know, I just got a job teaching English as you do <laughs> when you come to Japan <laughs> to, to work. Um, if, if you come to Japan for the first time to work and you're not an English teacher, kudos to you because uh, you're one of the rare ones. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was just doing my thing. And, uh, you know, at, you know, by this point, you know, he had already formed his own company, all that stuff. And I was doing my, I was like, I don't want to do this. Why am I doing this? Why am I English teaching? Like, and so one day I just, I reached out to him. I'm like, Hey, are you guys hiring over there? I would love to work with you. He's like, Oh, oh unfortunately not right now, but you know, feel free to stop by anytime. I'm like, all right, I'll take that. That's a win. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's, that's it, right? That's, that's an invitation. That's a, that's a win for me. I'll take it. That's <laughs> fine. Um, but one of the people I managed to connect with uh, through him uh, was a man by the name of Takuya Aizu, who you may know is the CEO of Inti Creates. And uh, I, had, I had never met him before in person, but I obviously knew Inti Creates. And, you know, uh, and I'm sitting there one night, I'm like, you know, I wonder if Inti Creates is hiring. Ah, they're probably not. No, nah, there's no way, right? And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to reach out to this man see what happens right couldn't hurt so i literally reached out to this the ceo of this company that i've never met before <laughs> in person but he was still gracious enough to link up with me on social media and uh i was like hey uh i know we've never met before but you know i'm matt i have this job experience you know i love into creates i love your games i have this job experience blah 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 uh do you guys need someone like me in into creates and the next day I get a response back from him. He's like, yeah, actually, uh, we do. Uh, why don't you come on down to the office and we'll talk? <laughs> wow. Jeez. Like, you know, it's this is one of those situations, dude, where it's just like, the men, that, that's, that is like, that is a, a, a the biggest endorsement ever for just like, you know what, give it a shot. Just go for it. It couldn't that's, hurt. That's what, I tell, that's what I tell everybody. And like, I came here, it was I came in my suit. I was sweating bullets. I, I had never done a, an interview in Japanese before. I'd never done anything like that. I had to like scramble to get like a resume done in Japanese. I had no idea what the hell I was doing, but I formed something together. And I came, and you know, he, you know, him and the rest of the the team that interviewed me, they were all super, super nice, super chill. Um, you know, allowed me to stumble with my words and, you know, didn't give me a hard time for, you know, not speaking perfect Japanese, you know. And, uh, you know, so I did that. And like uh, a couple of days later, I got a, I got an email that uh, extended me an offer for a job. And, and there you go. That was that. And I've been That's... here for, that was September of 2014, like a month after uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt came out. And, uh, I've been here ever since. Wow. So, you know, it's that's insane. It's that's insane. just yeah. that's a, that's an amazing story <laughs> though. That's an amazing story. So, everyone out there, if you take a shot, it can't hurt, like, right? People like when we especially when we do events and stuff like, you know, people come up to me and ask like, "Hey, like how did you get into the game industry? Like what did you do?" You know, cuz I mean, the reality is like the game industry is growing yeah. all the time. Yeah. It is a surging industry. Like there's always new opportunities popping up and people seem to have this idea like, Oh, unless you're like this exceptional programmer or this like jaw droppingly talented artist or something like that, you don't really have a path. And that's not true at all because there are so many different jobs required to at a game company, even like you know, integrates. We're not a gigantic company. There's like maybe like a 90 to hundred of us between all of, between all of our offices that we have. So we're not a huge, we're not tiny, but we're not huge either. Um, you know, but there's so many different roles to be filled in a game company that aren't just programming or, yeah. you know, um, game design or like, you know, art related. There are so many, you know, anywhere from, you know, stuff that I do, like, you know, you know, localization, yeah. marketing, uh, you know, legal, all, all kinds of stuff that you can do to find, you know, testing. Yeah. Being a tester is like the best way to get your foot in the industry. So I always tell people like, just go for it. And like, like I, I actually had had a couple job interviews before I, I left for Japan at other game companies. And how I got those was literally going up to people at conventions who worked at companies I liked. And I was just talk to them and get to know these people like, hey, how did you get your job? How did you? And people are always happy to share their experiences. 
Always. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. So like I, I always tell people, like, if you want to work in the game industry and you want to be a part of that, go to any game show. Any game show and just talk to people. Mm-hmm. Introduce yourself, hand a business card, whatever, and figure out how they did it. Yeah. Find somebody who's doing exactly what you want to do and figure out how they did it. Yeah. And like just me doing that. So like when I apply to, you know, you know, this company or that company, like, oh hey, you know, after speaking with person here in this fancy position at New York Comic Con, let's say, uh, you know, I decided that I might be a good fit for the job. And then they'll go big, like, hey, so and so, do you know this guy? I'm like, oh yeah, Matt, oh he was cool, yeah. Yeah, it's it, and you know, that's just, it's like it's networking in a net, in a nutshell. You know, just I'm, I'm telling you, that people. is the, the one of the most important things you can do. So anybody listening, if you are hoping to do something like what I'm doing, there you go. That's there's your homework. You heard it here. You heard it <laughs> here, folks. Yeah. You know, once once shows really start, you know, getting back in the swing of things. Of yeah, course. I'm actually very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited for shows to start coming back. Uh, Stuff is starting to come back here in the States a little bit. So it's yeah. nice to see that. Um, and it's hopefully shows will be coming back soon and we'll be able I to go to these things I, like nothing like it. Dude, I can't wait. Like I don't miss the travel, but I miss the shows. <laughs> no, I, I totally get it. I totally get it. It's, it's, there's like, it's like, there's like that hole, right? That gaping hole of like, oh, absolutely. we're missing something no here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No question about it. Especially when you're just so used to it. Like, like I said, I've been going to conventions since 2002. Exactly. I mean, this is, when I was what 16, 17, like yeah. this is the longest in my adult life I've gone without going to a convention. Yeah, me too. It's weird. I feel really weird about it, especially because <laughs> uh, we're on Long Island. We're very close to to uh, New York City, so New York Comic Con yeah. is kind of like the thing you do in October. But we have our ex- we have our expo, and then I'll go down to like Magfest and stuff like that, or PAX, or oh you my god, name yes, it. you name it, yes, yes. Um, I'm hope fingers crossed. One of the shows that we were doing every year for the past couple years until the the new times uh, was uh, Anime NYC. Yeah. Um. So I'm really, and that's in November. So fingers crossed. Well, I'm I really hope hoping so. that that you know we can get all you know vaxxed up and safe to travel by then. So finger, yeah. fingers crossed we can make this a reality in the next couple of months. Yeah. Let us know if you're in town. That'd be great. Oh, oh definitely. I, uh, I can't wait to go back to New York, man. I yeah, miss it. <laughs> yeah, New, York, New York is it's home to us, but uh, I totally get well, how you can miss it. Uh, you'd miss it even when you're kind of close and you can't go. It's weird. Yeah. But it has, it has its own unique charm. It's, it's, it, really it does. It certainly does. But that's the pizza the, and bagels help a lot. Oh, to be fair, absolutely. But. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's the pizza bagels, egg sandwiches, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. you can't, you can't do it anywhere. It, it's not the same miss, anywhere I, else. I miss it so bad. Man. <laughs> I miss it so bad. All right. So that's a great story. Um, obviously Inti creates does a lot of amazing stuff. You know, you've worked with some really great like properties over in the past, a lot of great original stuff. You know, you got your Mega mm-hmm. Man games, your Mega Man Zero games. I love the Bloodstain stuff you guys did with Bloodstain Curse of the Moon 1 and 2. Absolutely. And, and, and Blaster Master, like, bringing it back. Dude. Bring it back, Blaster Master, dude. Like, I, ha- I, ha- awesome. I have a funny story about Blaster Master, too, if you, if you, if you want to hear another story. Yeah, actually, um, you know, I was going to ask, like, of all the series to, like, resurrect, to just be um, like, you know what? Let's bring back Blaster Master. I love it. No, it's great. Like, Blaster Master is such an interesting history because, like, it was a. I'll, sh- I'll share two little stories with Go you. Go for it. Because, uh, uh, Blaster Master, the original NES game, was such a cult hit in the U.S. Mm-hmm. The Japanese version, uh, Cho Wakse uh, Senki Meta Fight, completely flopped in Japan. Sold terribly. It had like it, it, it was the exact same game. The gameplay was exactly the same. You know, just you know, a different. The only real difference between Metafight, the Japanese version, and Blaster Master was the opening cutscenes, really. The story. No, no, no boy and his frog. That's sad. Yeah, it, it is. I and you know, this was this was like, you know, you know, inter you know, galactic war against the Invam Dark Star army, aka the mutants. And like <laughs> You know, so it's like a very like '80s anime. Like our planet is fighting to defend itself of this mutant army force. You know, type of deal. Yeah. And then American version is like, boy, frog, radioactive stuff. Go in tank, find frog. So I mean, so <laughs> very American '80s stuff. It, Everything it is. was radioactive, and yeah, from space it or is. whatever. So yeah, I mean, there. You know, you got two completely different. Uh, two completely different stories, lore, if you could even call boy frog lore. Um, and but yeah, Blaster Master sold incredibly well, very popular title. Metafight completely flopped. 
And so like it has just a, a minuscule, tiny, tiny fan base uh, in Japan. And I'll never forget how what I came to terms with that fact when we actually introduced Blaster Master Zero for the very first time. Uh, we were doing our an Inti Creates 20th anniversary event uh, at like a like a event hall right down the street from here. And um, like this is where we were going to do the big reveal of Blaster Master Zero. And I'll never forget, I'm sitting out there like in the arena area, like just kind of keeping an eye on stuff. And they're doing sound checks. They accidentally play like the first maybe three seconds, four seconds of that, the like stage one intro, like that iconic, you know, music, right? And I'm like, oh my God, if anybody knows Blaster Master, that's all they need to know that that's Blaster Master. You only <laughs> need like the, like two, three seconds to know like, oh my God, that's Blaster Master, right? <laughs> yeah. Nobody blinked an eye. Not a single person in this entire audience like blinked an eye, like like heads perked up, nothing. That's so sad. Not a single person in that room had any idea what that was. And that Sunsoft and music just, is so good. It is, it is. But it was like, you know, there was no meta fight fans in the audience let's put it that way right whereas if that happened at any u.s gaming show there'd be a bunch of people like am i am i right though like 100 percent. it's it's strange how it's it's always strange how some of those games like i always hear stories that stuff like like metroid doesn't do super well over in japan i might be yeah, wrong like, but like it does incredibly like not americans love yeah. it yeah metroid is not historically super popular here it's no. not like nothing but it's yeah. like it's just not it's not the same i've actually heard that about castlevania as well that castlevania is more of more popular in the states but i could be definitely, wrong definitely definitely yeah. that's 100 yeah. definitely yeah. so so it's upsetting because blaster master is so good and it's it got, is. it's such a it's such a unique nes game uh and you know what you guys have done with it with with the zero games you know, you just kind of, you took everything and you just kind of improved upon it in every way, which is really just beautiful. Uh, whether yeah. it's the tank stuff, the stuff on foot, the top down, it's like, it's so good. But like, um, so, so, so you're saying that Blaster Master isn't like super popular in Japan. So as a, as a company that's, you know, located in Japan, what, what brings you to kind of go, we're going to work with Blaster Master. We want to do this. Well, I think it's a couple of things because like, you know, we, you know, nowadays and you know, it's been this way for a while now, like especially here in Japan, like the Japanese um, console game market is steadily, slowly but surely shrinking and being not, that void is being filled by mobile games. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you know, it's, a, it's and it's been that way for even since we started self-publishing our stuff in 2014, it's been the yeah. case. Yeah. And it's you know, only has continued to be so. Um so even even though you know Integrates is a Japanese company, like you know, our thankfully you know the powers that be here had the foresight to realize like okay, like we can't just you know because as you may know, like Integrates, you know, besides like having their name on a bunch of Mega Man games, nobody really knew anything about them besides that, you know, because until Azure Striker Gunvolt released in 2014, Integrates was solely a basically like you know like a dev for hire studio, you yeah. know, companies would contract into creates to make their games into creates would make them. They say, okay, company, here's the game. Company says, okay, there's the money. Thank you very much. And that's, you know, that's it. Right. You know, it's a uh, pretty standard fare. Yeah. Um, and, it, but it, you know, in 2014, when we self published, you know, Gunvolt was the first game we, you know, self developed and self published. So it was a, kind of like a new era for into you know, cause when you, when you, when, you know, company, you know, you know, let's say we made a bunch of games for like Bandai Namco. So let's say Bandai yeah. Namco is like, all right, Integrates, we're going to give you X amount of money to develop this game. And you say, okay, that sounds good. Let's do it. But that's exactly, you know exactly what you're getting. No more, no less. Right? Um, but, you know, when you per, when you self-publish your own game, you know, it's a lot more risk or war. Of course. Right? You know, because if, if the game tanks, well, then it's going to hurt really bad. But if the game does well, that's all yours. Right? So, you know... And knowing that, even in 2014, like you, we as a Japanese company just could not put all of our eggs in the Japanese market basket. It's just not enough yeah. to compete anymore. Yeah, no, it's um, not. You know, even, even 
to this day, you know, depending on the it, 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 the percentages vary by depending on the series, but um, you know, North America is far and away our biggest uh, like has like our like if you look at the percent like you know if you break down the sales of a game and like North the North America region is by far the biggest percentile. Makes um, sense. Yeah, you, know, you know, games like Gunvolt, you know, like more of our anime style stuff uh, tend to have a bigger slice in Japan. Uh, you know, North America is still the biggest, don't get me wrong, but, like, you know, the numbers are a bit more less in North America, but then it's for stuff like Blaster Master Zero or, like, Curse of the Moon, it's way more. Yeah. That um, makes sense. So, so, like, you know, you kind of have to have a world, and it's, you know, the way digital distribution is, um, you kind of have to have a worldwide strategy. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of, like, the mantra is, like, we make games, you know, when I say we, I mean, the you know, Insta creates, like, we know the Japanese market, we, you know, besides me and like a few other people, it's all Japanese folks here. They know, you know, they make games as Japanese people with Japanese taste for the Japanese market. But those games just happen to be very popular all around the world. But yeah, I mean, listen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's it's been something like a lot of us who grew up in the, who were born in the 80s and grew up in the 90s and the early 2000s, like guys like you mm -hmm. and me did, mm -hmm. you know, Japanese stuff was very present in our media. Oh, God, uh, yeah, You know, absolutely. I mean, like, I always credit stuff like, yeah, obviously, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Final Fantasy VII. Like, these were oh, things absolutely. that, like, came out and really, like, was like, hey, guess what, guys? This is some, like, anime-inspired stuff or anime in general. And um, try it out. And a lot of us were like, yeah, I want that. I want yeah, that. I was, I was hooked, man. I was, I was totally hooked. hooked. I was totally hooked. Yeah. And, and, and even as like kids, like we were, you know, playing all these Japanese games. We didn't even know it as kids. You know, when you're five years old playing, you know, Mega Man or Super Mario Brothers or something like that, you don't know that this is like, you know, Japanese no. creators. Like you don't know yeah, stuff, no, right? Like, definitely, you know. definitely not. And, <laughs> and these things really, uh, really hit home. I remember being at MAGFest. And one of the composers from Mega Man 3, and I'm drawing a blank uh, on, on... That would her. be uh, Harumi Fujita. Yeah, Fujita. Yeah, she she was there, and she was lovely. Just a wonderful oh, conversation. She's, she was she was delightful. On, I was there, too. <laughs> oh, oh, you were? Well, fantastic. <laughs> I um I was uh, playing when um, she, when they were doing the Mega Manathon at MAGFest, and uh, she was on stage for Mega Man 3. Cool. I was the one who was playing Mega Man 3. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's so cool. I didn't even realize. That's so awesome. Yep. I love that. That was me. That's that was so me. cool. Yeah. She was super sweet. She was wonderful. Yeah. So I remember talking, I remember talking at her panel and she was like, you know, I never knew that Mega Man or, you know, Rockman was so big over in the States. Like they had no idea. No. So not and, only and that it's... was like universal. That wasn't just like her or Capcom. That was universally. So Which they is... had no idea how their stuff was doing. Like in the West, in like North America or Europe, they had no idea. Which was no to clue. me is like that. I feel so bad for the creators. It's like, no, no, we love your stuff. Like we listen to your music all the time or we play these games mm -hmm. all the time. Like there's a giant fan base of, of Westerners and of Americans that love the classic Japanese style and the classic Japanese mm -hmm. approach to video games. Mm -hmm. Like even today, I read a report that said that um, Sega put out a report about, about Persona 5 doing very, very well. Mm -hmm. um, obviously super anime influenced and Absolutely. they say and they said in their report they're like the western world in the united states was a big portion of this so oh, yeah. we know that there's a fan base Absolutely. here <sighs> and stuff like blaster master and you know coming over and and being such a big deal in the states that that's really great uh to to see that and i believe it 100 percent and I don't think your Blaster Master Zero games shy away from the look at all. I think they're very no, and the graphics are are, you know, they're they're as close to eight like actual like native eight bit as possible. They do you guys do some tricks there to make it look like this oh, like, yeah. amazing uh, yeah. stuff. It's, it's but like it's, yeah, it's like mo it's like modern eight bit. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like it's like you guys it's like you guys are giving us like. It's almost like, oh, this is what I I felt they looked like when I was a kid. You know, yes, it's like that yes, kind of yes. dreamscape. That's, ex that's exactly it. Like that's kind of the thing, right? It's like, you know, could Blaster Master Zero run on an NES? No way. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> Not an Ice Cube's chance in hell that game is running on an NES. But at the same time, like, like you know, as a kid, you have those like rose-colored glasses and like 
you imagine these 8-bit worlds to be something much more vibrant and colorful and expressive than they actually are on the TV, right? Yeah. And we have, the, you know, with like in these modern retro games, that's kind of like what we do, right? It's like we make the games look like you felt they looked when you were a kid. Yeah. No, it's true. You hit it's the true. nail right on the head there. It's like it's like it's it's that whole thing, but um, and Blaster Master, I think the original Blaster Master actually does look pretty good. Um, yeah, it, it, can, it, hold, it holds up. It, it holds up today. But when you when you put it next to zero, you're like, okay. Yeah, no, zero, <laughs> zero like, kind of blows it out of the water in that instance. But so how does that happen? Like, how do you, you – did you guys, like, go to Sunsoft and were like, hey, we want to bring back Blaster Master? So, I'll tell you exactly how it happened because, again, it's one of those just right place, of right time. Of course it is. Like, as as – <laughs> So many things in this industry are like, like my stories are just the tip of the iceberg. Like you could talk to any person from any game company and they'll tell you like, you know, these fateful meetings, these random occurrences were kind of like the catalyst to, you know, uh, I always ask my buddies who worked on uh, cadence of Hyrule. I'm like, how in the world did you Zelda. make that happen? They're like, we'll never tell. <laughs> of course, of course <laughs> they like, won't. like I, I imagine like, you know, Bit Summit. You know, post Bit Summit, Aonuma San's there. They just happened to meet them. A couple of drinks were involved, and some wild ideas were thrown out. So <laughs> That's what have, I imagine it was. But so we have this game knows. that we want to put that we want to put Zelda characters in. You know, it's like I mean, especially because Nintendo has got to be the most protective over everything. And if you guys knew their secret, then you could go like, hey, um, so. <laughs> Can we make a... <laughs> yeah, right? You name it, you know? Right, exactly. Um, but for Blaster... In the case of Blaster Master Zero, um, this is uh, E3 2015. Uh, my very, very first E3 ever. You know? And that was like that was like the promised land, right? You yeah, know, yeah. In like EGM and GamePro and stuff like that. That was the promised land. I remember and, those uh, days. <laughs> yep. And uh, so that was my first E3. Uh, I was super excited. You know, my uh, day one was great. You know, we... Got to walk around the show floor, had some really good meetings, and it was just like, holy crap, I'm here at E3. What the heck? And um, uh, that night, uh, you know, we, you know, doing like, you know, stuff after the show, you know, meeting out with friends, you know, going to these like, you know, there's like after parties, like every night, you, you know, just meeting cool, interesting people. And uh, I get, I we're get back to our hotel and like my, my, my back's hurting a little bit. Uh, nothing like crazy. But I was like, oh, you know, it was, you know, long day. You know, my back's a little sore. And uh, I wake up the next day for day two. You know, we have a full full day planned. And I wake up at like six in the morning and I roll over to get out of bed. And it felt like somebody jammed a knife in my lower back. Mm. Like just, I like audibly screamed. It was so painful. <sighs> like, <laughs> like I later learned that I like severely pinched the sciatica nerve in my back. Ugh. Um, which if you've ever experienced that before, it sucks. Yeah, I've, I've heard nothing good about that. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. It just debilitates you. It's awful. Um, so I was like just completely useless. Like I couldn't move. Like it took me like 30 minutes just to get myself out of bed and shuffle over to grab like a bottle of water. Like it was rough. Um, shout outs to my... Uh, a uh, co-worker, uh, Takeda-san, who, with no English knowledge, walked all the way down, like, 20 minutes to the CVS and bought me, like, Motrin and, like, heating pads and stuff like that. Wow. <laughs> with no knowledge of English whatsoever. And I was like, I sent him pictures of, like, Motrin and the heating pads. I'm like, just show them this, and they'll get it for you. <laughs> and to his credit, he did that. He was he was the MVP of the day. And my friend who brought me bulgogi, uh, my friend Chris who brought me bulgogi later in the day because I was... <laughs> couldn't move uh, but anyway so like so so we had you know so you know i you know when we do meetings and stuff you know i uh i translate and interpret to the best of my ability for our ceo isusan you know so if i'm not there he's kind of hamstrung on what he can do because you know he can't really hold these meetings without somebody there to interpret so basically he then had to cancel all his meetings for the day because I, 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 I couldn't go. I could barely get out of bed, let alone yeah. get over to the convention center and, yeah. you know, traits around there all day. Um, so he um, bumps into uh, one of his one of the one of his buddies that he knows from Sunsoft. 
and you know who was trying to he had a meeting with Nintendo scheduled um but they had it scheduled like before the show floor actually opens um so you needed like an exhibitor pass to get in basically mm -hmm. which he did not have so he he was just like a he was just an attendee yeah you know because like Sunsoft didn't have a booth or anything so he was just a normal attendee and so they wouldn't let him in even though he's like I have the meeting you can see I have the meeting they're like sorry dude no exhibitor pass you ain't getting in yet um so he was like so he was kind of like oh what am i gonna do you know i can't do the thing um so he then Izusan spots one of our uh another guy we know uh chris who was working at one of the booths and he's like who spoke some japanese and he's like oh chris like you know, explain the situation I and mean, chris to his credit and again another catalyst uh to this he goes to the nintendo booth and tracks down someone from nintendo to come you know like like like, oh, no, he's legit. It's okay. Like, he can come in. Like, um, and so uh, later on, you know, Isasan bumps into them, um, like, sitting at a table just having a meeting. And, uh, you know, it looked like it wasn't really going all that well. And so, like, you know, Isasan being, being the kind of guy that he is, just kind of like, hey, hey, uh, can I help? <laughs> you know, is there anything I can do? So he just he just inserts himself into this meeting. Just he's now part of this. This is now that's a three person meeting. Wonderful. <laughs> that's that's once again take a shot. Take a shot, man. And uh, so you know they were talking about you know wanting to revive one of their um, revive one of their old IPs in you know you know and they knew that you know if you're going to revive an old I Sunsoft IP for the U.S. audience. Well, obviously, it's going to be Blaster Master, and you know, the you know they were going back and forth, and you know, it, nothing was kind of like really sticking, and you know they were talking, asking like, uh, okay, well, who's going to develop it? What are you going to do about developing it? And I'm not sure all the small details, but basically, the conversation got to a point where Isusan was like, well, what if we did it? And they were like. Yeah, yeah, all right. There, right, there you go. <laughs> like, yeah. That's that's and, I... uh, and you know, the more conversations were had, paperwork was signed, and uh, we acquired the rights to Blaster Master. It's it's <laughs> what's so funny about that is I think that a lot of us as gamers and fans always think that there's some like romance to it you know like there's like I mean, this more romantic story there, there might sometimes be there is there sometimes might be there is, definitely but, but. You, you, you a lot of times it's just a couple dudes or a couple people sitting down having lunch having some drinks and they're like you know what we would love to to make to develop blaster master for sunsoft for the nintendo switch as a as what i think it was a launch title right yeah pretty or much very close uh, it, it, it was launch day here in japan and then for what i can't remember the exact reason why it came out like a week later in North America, yeah, it was like it was like yeah, it was like not quite a week after official launch day. So, so launch week, launch, launch week. window week, whatever Close you enough. want to call it. Close enough, yeah. I, I'll when say, the eShop actually was like starved for games. Yeah, and now it's the opposite. Now it's it's crazy, and you know, it's. <laughs> I thought I I didn't get a switch at launch. I couldn't get one. I like the the pre order window. The internet died in my house the night the pre-order window went oh, up, so I couldn't no. get a switch. So I had to, oh, I, had to I had to be one of those people who was like scrounging to get a switch. I didn't get one until like June of that year, and I was like, "But I want to play Breath of the Wild. I guess I'll play Horizon. It'll maybe scratch the itch." Um, <laughs> but I remember seeing Blaster Master Zero on a on a friend's switch, and I was really taken back of how good it looked, especially on, in handheld mode, especially on the switch. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was one of the first games I bought when I got a switch. And I loved how good it looks, and I pl I've played both of them, um, and I intend to play the third one all on the Switch. I feel like the mm -hmm. Switch is, to me, and you know, obviously these games come out on Switch, they come out on Steam, they come out everywhere, but it feels like the Switch, in, it, to me, is, has been such a great champion for like indie developers and smaller developers or teams that are making games that, you know, these, these I don't want to say they're smaller because they're not, and they're very important. Um, but, you know, these classic experiences, it's really nice to see that. And do you feel like the Switch and the popularity of Switch and, and digital storefronts like Steam, do you feel like that not only has obviously helped uh, games like Blaster Master Zero really get a foothold, but do you feel like it's brought also, do you, do you also feel like this could have maybe brought 
these older series to obviously people like us who grew up playing these games, but also to a younger audience? Like, do you feel like it's a really good gateway for them? Absolutely. Like the, the switch did something really special. Um, you know, when they combined their, you know, handheld and, you know, home console into one, uh, they did something really special with that. And, you know, I, especially for like us at Inti creates, like, you know, we've always kind of Nintendo platforms have always been kind of like our home base, so to speak. Yeah, Mega Man Zero, um, right? Exactly. Right. So, you know, it just kind of really made sense um for us to really get our feet wet with the nintendo switch and even in the, the nintendo 3ds before that of course you know, with like the gun games. Mm-hmm. yeah um so you know it, it really just made sense and you know with you know nintendo's popularity with the younger audiences um it yeah it really does give those younger audiences every opportunity to discover you know more older classic ips that maybe they didn't grow up with mm-hmm. um but you know they have a chance to experience now yeah. in 2021. Um, it's a ch- it can be a ch- I will say though it can be a challenge to um, uh, market these retro style games to a younger audience. Um, yeah, you know, because they they didn't grow up with that sort of aesthetic. They don't you know the name Blaster Master doesn't mean anything to your average. 12 year old kid right it's a good name though <laughs> unless they have like unless they have like a cool dad or like a cool uncle or something like that who you know is preaching preaching the classics to them but um so uh it does give them every opportunity um to do that but that is uh, and at the same time it's also one of the challenges we face you know marketing these games yeah. uh, which they kind of just naturally lend themselves to an older audience mm-hmm. usually people like us yeah who are familiar with the ip um Whereas, like, you know, like, I would say the average age of a Blaster Master Zero player is much older than, say, the average age of a Gunvolt player. Yes. Right? Because Gunvolt, despite its aesthetic, it, you know, despite, you know, it still has, you know, pixelated graphics, um, the 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 super anime aesthetics of Gunvolt, really, like, the character designs and stuff like that, um, resonated more with a younger audience. Yeah. Um, who's a lot more into that stuff than mm-hmm. say a blaster master zero or say a curse of the moon. Yeah. Um, uh, for example. Um, but it, it, it is true though. Like it's, there's, there's just something, especially the switch in particular, there's just something about the, um, there's just something about the switch where it's, it just feels right. Yeah. I, Playing I, I, more, I, the like classic style. It's hard to explain with it, words, it but is. it's just, it just, it just hits right. There's it a click. It does. It just, yes. I, it's like, there's a thing like, it's just like, I could have played, I could have played it. I could have played these games elsewhere and it's one oh, of those, easily. Th- and I don't want to like, <laughs> it's like, and I, maybe I'm just a purist. Like I'm even the type of guy who I got the super Nintendo controller for the switch. I and, did too. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got, I got the super Nintendo controller for the switch because it's awesome. And I downloaded final fantasy seven. And I was just like, well, this feels wrong, but if this if this is supposed to be wrong, then I don't want to feel right. So it's like <laughs> one of those things. It's like, I remember when this used to be a Nintendo game. Uh, well, Final Fantasy used to be a Nintendo series, but yep. Blaster Master Zero on the Switch, like, oh my gosh. Like, it, it just feels it, right. It just, it just feels right. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's a chocolate peanut butter situation. You know, if, if you <laughs> yep. like chocolate and peanut butter, which I do. Yep. Um, yeah, me too. It's one of those things <laughs> where it's like, it's like, oh, you just, you, you, you nailed it. You hit it out of the park. And, you know, after playing, I replayed the games recently because um, when we found out I was going to have, have this, this wonderful chat with you, by the way, this has oh, been so no, great I'm, so far. No, I'm, having, I'm having a blast. This is a great Lovely. way to start, to start my day at the office. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> definitely, dude. This is a great way to end my day over here um, after a rather long work week. Um, so, you guys, you guys, not only did you kind of remake blaster master but you've improved upon it you've 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 definitely given something that the old fans are going to love something that new fans are going to appreciate as well and i played the first one i'm like this is awesome you can't do much better than it and then i played two and like (laughs) to be fair most times video games are like the one medium where the sequels can often be better than the original just because Mm -hmm. you can build upon it case in point we talked about mega man 2 right Exactly. Blaster Master Zero Two. I was like, well, "How did you guys do this? How did you make a better game?" <laughs> Dude, <laughs> now, that, I'm, that, this is not me throwing shade Ishizawa. at the first one. I'm not throwing oh, no, shade no, no, at the no, first no, one. No. I'm just like, yeah, how did no, you guys no, make no, a no. Be- how did you guys make a better game? Like, how did you no, do it? 
that that's that's the thing right you know it's um you know getting a sequel is the chance to really like take what you've learned, take the feedback that you got, not just only from your own experiences and from the dev team's experience, but, you know, we we definitely listened to fan feedback as well. We listened to what people liked about the games, yeah. what people didn't like about the games. Because, you know, with Blaster Master, like, you already had such a good framework. Yeah. I mean, what ma- the things that make Blaster Master good and that make Blaster Master fun, you don't really have to mess with very much. Um, you know, so what we were able to do is, you know, the core mechanics of Blaster Master, you know, the 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 jumping tank That's... game side side scrolling gameplay, the, you know, the isometric top down shooting gameplay, those are already so good and yeah. were revolutionary for their time. Yeah. Um really... so you, you have such a good solid foundation to work with. So like it's you know, it's the it's the don't fix it if it ain't broke yeah. thing, right? So we're able to build all this already super great foundation and just make it even better. Yeah. You know, take stuff about, you know, and you know, the original Blaster Master or just any game from the era, you know, and you know, obviously the visuals are, you know, kind of first and foremost, you know, you have, you know, widescreen, you have you can do so much more with the visuals. So obviously the visuals are gonna get a huge facelift. And then, you know, other gameplay stuff like getting rid of lives and continues. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, making um you know, what was the thing? You know, being able to like summon the tank from like uh, checkpoints, uh, which we've built upon in two, we've built upon even further in three. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't know, know that yet because I haven't played it. <laughs> you know, but just, you know, these quality of life improvements, yeah. I think, you know, if, if the foundation's already good, yeah, then you don't have to break and rebuild the foundation. Take the foundation that's already there and build upon it with all, you know, the, the things that modern gamers expect. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think the, the, you know, from direct director Nishizawa and the team, you know, the creative team who put together the framework of the game itself um, did an absolutely amazing job. Yeah. Uh, you know, building on building something with one and then tweaking it and adding new stuff to make it even more fun in two. Like, you know, like I'd say like, like the Gaia system in two is one of the biggest, you know, changes slash upgrades. Like that just it completely revolutionizes revolutionizes the way you play Blaster Master Zero 2 compared to 1 but it's even more fun. Too. Yes. Yeah, it's like it, it it's so good. It's 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 such a blast to play and you know, pardon the pun on the name, but it's a game it's just, you know, and at the core, you know, Blaster Masters, you know, it's really just about that, right? It's just about driving around or walking around and blasting stuff and it's mutant blasting action it's, it's, i use that tagline in every single game <laughs> something something mutant blasting Plus, action <laughs> and and i love how I, I just love the vibe i love the vibe the character models look so good the anime kind of cut scene looking stuff yeah, the, like the aesthetic yeah the aesthetic is so it, good it, it, it fits it really does and that's another thing about two is that you know we were able to introduce so many more characters yeah and you know because with one like you know, with like, you know, it's not just the gameplay. What what I love what the team did was you take these two these two lures, right, of Metafight and Blaster Master that have nothing to do with each other <laughs> whatsoever. And then you have stuff like the um the Worlds of Power novel. That yeah. like novelization of Blaster Master, which introduces whole other like that's where Eve comes from. Yeah. Eve, yeah. Eve, who's a pinnacle character in the Blaster Master Zero series, was birthed from a scholastic book from 1990. Hey, I love which, it. Which, which, funny story. I actually picked that up recently. I never owned that as a kid. I picked that. I found it on Amazon for like 12 bucks, Worth and it. I had it shipped to Japan. Uh, I literally, like, I was getting my car worked on like last month when it got delivered. I literally just sat there while my car was getting worked on, and I read the entire thing cover to cover. You know, I was talking about, you know, Jason's like this little, like, this little, he's like a 10 year old kid or something like that. And like, they describe Eve as like a, a, like a perfect stereotype of like a red haired American teenager. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, but like, it's just the fact that like you take all this stuff that have nothing to do with each other and are just completely different and somehow, like, just, put it all together in this like you know that's why it's called zero because it's taking all of this stuff 
and starting over from the beginning. Of course. And, and, and then two, you take all of that crazy pieces of lore that we, you know, cobbled together and then just build directly on that. That's why two is so fun because it was a direct sequel to all of that that we already established. And it added the, the new cast of characters that was added in two, I think is one of the, the best things about it. Amazing. Uh, everything from that type of stuff, the, you know, the boss fights are, are bigger. Um, there seems like just so much more to do. It builds upon that game and the framework just so well. And it has me super excited for, for three because it's clear that, you know, Inti creates and the team there and everyone that works over there just really knows how to make this game work. They know what they're doing. And I'm excited to see, you know, you got kind of that like dimensional stuff going on with Blaster Master Zero Three, what I've seen from like the trailers and stuff. Yeah, because, you know, you're yeah, in space cool. and now you got to break mm -hmm. through into like, I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's necessarily like a multiverse, but it's like you're breaking into like, the alternate dimensions of things, which is like very much of the now and in, in the best ways possible. And I love when, when games do stuff like that. And as, as Blaster Master Zero Three is, is getting pretty close uh, to release. Yeah. Like less than four weeks now. Yeah. yeah at, the so, time, at the time of this recording. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I need to get this up very, very, very quickly so that uh, yeah. folks online can have enough time to really uh, listen to all these great things that you have to say about the game and about the series in general like there's clearly a lot of a lot of passion here which i i really appreciate and and, and honestly honestly that's the thing with this team like like one of the things that like especially like the directors of all the different games really sort of pride themselves on like they want to be the biggest fans of that work so you will uh, you will be hard pressed to find a bigger blaster master slash meta fight fan than director nishizawa but that's you, what you you'd want. You'd be hard pressed to find exactly. That's what you but want. That's it, right? That's, that's what you you'd want. You'd be hard pressed to find a bigger fan of I, these of these works than than the director himself. It's like, and it all kind of stems from that, you know. If you don't want to play the game, then why work it on it? You know what I mean? I mean? Like that's, honestly, that's kind of our mantra, right? Like we don't ask anybody to create a game they don't want to make or play themselves. Make the games you want to play. It, that's exactly. I mean, that's. It sounds simple, but mm. it. It's way more important than I can ever even express. Absolutely. <laughs> and I think that sometimes it might get lost in the translation and just sure. while oh, you're absolutely. working and stuff. And so we got to talk a little bit about Blaster Master Zero Three because that's the big one coming out. It looks so good. I've watched the trailer a bunch of times. I've watched the gameplay <laughs> trailers. I'm like ready. I'm ready for this to come out. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get it on Switch because, you know, perfect. just having that on the go is just the perfect way for me to play it. So what excites you most? about Blaster Master Zero Three? So, so I think what's really cool about Blaster Master Zero Three, because, you know, like I said, you know, especially when it comes to the lore, people who are really invested in the lore that we've created for this series, I think are going to walk away super, super satisfied um, because, you know, the, the gameplay, you know, it continues to evolve. Yeah. The gameplay continues, you know, especially, um, I would say, well, I'll, I'll take it from a gameplay standpoint and from a lore standpoint. Um, I think what people are going to be really excited about, and some people may have even uh, got a chance to try this out um, in like, cause we had a demo out on steam uh, about like a week or so ago. Um, I, I didn't so know I that. Know, yeah. So some people, uh, well, maybe you'll get another chance. Mm. Who knows? I don't, know that, <laughs> don't, don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about, but, um, um, uh, but w one of the new core mechanics that we did, you know, cause in the original game, both on NES and then zero one and two, the way the the top down segments work, you know, with like the gun levels, right? You know, as you increase your gun level, you got access to a new weapon. Yeah. And then as you got hit, you would lose your gun levels and kind of lose access to those. So it, you were always kind of encouraged to not take damage and keep that gun level up, so you could use the, you know, at least in Blast Red Zero One, just the Uber, as I call it, the Rainbow Death Helix, <laughs> <laughs> the the wave gun. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good way to call it I mean, it is i mean it just it it rewards you for for not taking damage and that is reward good. is to obliterate everything that you see um so but what we did for three was we completely reworked the gun level system and now instead of uh having you know from level as you level up you get access to new guns from start to finish you have constant access to five different guns all right. uh, some of which are new, some of which kind of are like amalgamations and callbacks to older uh, guns from the first two games. I like it. 
And so you have access to them at all times. And, and so as you raise your gun level, what happens is those different guns sort of power up in their own way. So like, let's say one, one of them is, um, it's called high diffusion. It's like the, the shotgun blast from yeah, one, yeah, 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 the yeah. diffusion blast from gun. So as you level that up, you know, let's say the, you know, stuff like the rate of fire will increase, uh, the spread will increase, you know, the number of, you know, bullets that comes out that will increase. Um, you have another one called a reflex striker, uh, which takes like the striker gun from one and it has like a, like a, um, it has like a lock on mechanism. Uh, so like you, it kind of shoots out like a, like a lock on blast and you lock on a couple different enemies and you, you know, hold the button to, to zap them basically. Um, but as that gets powered up, you know, you the attack power goes up, the number of things you can target goes up, stuff like that. Right. Cool. So the, those existing guns you and you, so what you're able to do is you are constantly able to sort of choose the right gun for the right situation right I like and that. you will always have access to it you know you, you're not going to be able to just you know rainbow death you your way through everything this time around because uh, certain guns will work better in certain situations so you are very much encouraged to experiment with the different guns and keep your gun levels up not so you don't lose access to them but so you can have the most powerful versions of them i like that that's really cool uh, yeah so I, I definitely think uh people will enjoy that very much um uh, from the lore and just like the story lore standpoint um you know the first two games are really focused on a lot of the stuff was based on blaster master lore you yeah. know you with fred the frog and eve and you know and you had a bunch of the new characters what i loved about the new characters for is they were all callbacks to like sunsoft games with a few exceptions uh, you know, like Gom Gombe and Tai are, you know, callbacks to like Iki and like, you know, stuff like Kana is like, you know, and that whole thing is like a callback to like Trip World, stuff like that. Um, now in Blaster Master Zero Three, and, and, you know, we show this, you know, very much in like the trailers and stuff. Um, it, you're all, it all is coming back to the planet Sophia, which is where the events of Metafight take place. And then so you're running into, you know, Kane and Jennifer Gardner, who are the protagonists from Metafight. So these worlds are colliding together in this. So cool. And like, you know, and it, it's this is even on the Blaster Master Zero Three website. So this isn't like, I'm not really spoiling anything at this point. Um, you know, the OG tank, the original metal attacker is back. Like that's Kane, the original protagonist from the original version of the original tank. It's all here and it's all kind of coming together. Like these worlds collide. And so I just think that's so cool, especially for the Western audience. Even Blaster Master fans may not be super familiar with like the lore from like the meta fight side of things, yeah. you know, the Japanese side of things. This was completely different, you know? So having these worlds now really come together, uh, it's 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 really cool. that's that's brilliant <laughs> that's brilliant i i love that I, I, if, if you are invested in the the story in any way shape or form i think you're really gonna like uh that's, what we have in store for three that, that's uh, i'm excited i, I i'm like <laughs> i'm like man i got it's only it's only a couple weeks away it's only like four weeks, weeks away. away a couple weeks yeah. away i'll play i'll play some stuff in the meantime and get excited for it. maybe i'll just you know uh go back and play uh blaster master zero two again or something um Fine by me. <laughs> yeah yeah right um I know a lot of the marketing has said that this is, and you know, this is the end of the Blaster Master Zero story. Uh, yeah, paying attention. Yeah, I try. I try. <laughs> I try. Um, now, what the end could mean could mean anything. You know, it doesn't mean that doesn't always mean that a certain company is not going to work with a certain property anymore. But I feel like when you hear that stuff, it's like that means they're going to just this game is just going to like be everything that we want and it's going to give us all of this stuff it's going to be a blast to play but there's a bittersweet there's a bittersweet moment to it um sure as a developer as someone who works with these games as a producer um i know you're always excited to for, for to work on this stuff so what is what is that kind of that bittersweet feeling or is it just like you know what we did some really great stuff here and we have got some great stuff coming in the future you know so what's what's that feel like what's that whole yeah. thing that's a really good question. And, you know, there definitely is, there, that definitely is a part of it, right? Um, 
but I guess before I get into that, I guess I should probably say now you can take this to me whatever you want. So <laughs> I, will, I, 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 I will I will preface I will preface it with that. Now the what this is is you know this is the final as we say in in the trailer is the final piece of a trilogy, the conclusion of the Jason saga. You can take that to mean whatever you will. That I will. <laughs> so just just gonna put that out there. Um, but you know, but you know, it, it, it is it, it is an interesting feeling because it's like uh, I, I hope we give the, the people what they want. Uh, I when you know when I was going through localizing this game, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, this is the good stuff. Yep, this is the good stuff. Okay, I like this. Yep. But like, uh, I, I so in that sense, I hope it gives people what they want, and it, you know, this they can finish Blast Master Zero Three and be like, yes, yes, that's the good. That was the good stuff. Um, but you know, when it comes to like, you know, potentially ending a series or, you know, it's, 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 it's always a kind of a difficult balance because you, know, you, when you make a new IP and then you have a sequel, or in this case, you know, a third game, you really start to fall in love with the IP and the characters and the story yeah. that you've managed to create. Um, so you kind of want to just keep it going forever. Right. Oh, <laughs> you of know? course. You know, so there's there's like a part of you that's like, okay, you know, we've established, you know, we have stuff like Gunvolt and Galgun and Blaster Master and Curse of the Moon and all this stuff that is, has sequels, right? So you, there's like a part of you that always just wants to keep giving them more Gunvolt, keep giving them more Blaster Master, keep giving them more of this, keep giving them more of that. Um, but then, yeah, like as you said, there is another part of you. It's like, you know, there's only so many people here. We can only make so many games at a time. Um, so, you know, there's so many cool ideas you know, that, you know, our talented staff have come up with over the years. Um, you know, you, I look at these like design docs, like, man, this game looks so freaking cool, but you only have so many resources, right? So it, it, it can really be, it's a tough challenge to find the, to find the delicate balance of, you know, keeping an IP alive with sequels and new content versus like, okay, well, we, we want to, we have all these other amazing things we want to do too, you know, what stays, what goes. I mean, thankfully, I don't have to make those decisions because I don't know if I could. <laughs> any sort of ease. You know, people higher, people on, you know, higher on the pay grade make those decisions. But uh, uh, that, that's that's the struggle, right? Um, but, you know, you know, we always have, you know, we are, we at Inti Creates are never not working on projects. Of course. You know, we're, we are always working on, I would say at least three to four different projects at any given moment. So, you know, so we always have stuff in the pipeline. You know, we have, you know, you know, Blaster Master Zero 3 is dropping in a couple of weeks. You know, we got, you know, Azure Striker Gunvolt 3, you know, coming out in 2022. And we have all this other cool stuff in the pipeline that I can't even talk about yet. Yeah. Um, so there's always cool stuff being worked on. And yeah, it's like, you know, I want, I want Blaster Master and Gunvolt and Curse of the Moon and Galgun to exist forever. Yeah, but you also do have to find room for new stuff too, because there's just so much cool. There's so many cool ideas. Well, I mean, um, I t yeah, creators always want to, you know, always also probably want to try new stuff out every now. And then. It's probably there's probably it's probably liberating uh, to a degree it is. to just be like, you know what, I have this idea, let's give it a shot. And you could do that when you have successful franchises like you've made. So I think that's really nice to see. And uh, Definitely. What I, what Absolutely. I, what I appreciate about the Inti Creates library is that it's, it's just very vast. It's very vast. It's diverse. It's got a lot of great stuff in it. You know, I love the Gun Vault games. The uh, Curse of the Moon stuff is really good. Blast and Rest of Zero is obviously awesome. Um, there's a lot of blasting. A lot of the games are about a, running to the right and it, shooting stuff, which I, I mean, love. Two D side scrolling action is kind of an Inti Creates DNA, yeah. right? So I mean, like it's what we do. It's what we love. Um, I think as long as Inti Creates exists, we will be making 2D side-scrolling action games. Um, uh, with you know, until un until our until our last get uh, last last uh, breath, we will be making 2D side-scrolling action games. You know, we make other stuff too. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, people people are always a little shy to talk about it, but you know, we have our you know our uh, our black sheep of the family, Galgun, Gal which is. <laughs> It's just it's still shooting, but it's a whole different world a, of shooting. It's a little different. You know? It's a little different when it comes to shooting. Uh, yeah, but then you know that's also you know that's that's all three D. That's all. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you know, it's a whole it's a whole different world. Or you know you have like Dragon Mark for Death, which is still two D side scrolling, but yes. it's not, not so much shooting as it is more like you know fighting. Uh, like 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I once again another title I really really enjoy. But as a as a guy who has a mega buster behind him, um I have to say I appreciate as the 2D side scrolling action game and yes. the yeah, t and to 2D side scrolling uh, running gun. So And honestly, as long as people like you continue to exist and continue <laughs> to support companies like us who make this stuff we're going to keep making it. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. Um Matt, I got to say, man, this was awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of oh, what's dude, gotta it's be been an absolute pleasure and an incredibly busy schedule to meet with us and to talk to us. Uh, Long Island Retro Gaming, obviously these are not retro games per se, but we think the retro game umbrella kind of covers anything that's retro or retro inspired. And what, what you all Absolutely. are doing at retro, uh, what, what you're all doing at Inti Creates is just retro love magic and uh i love it i know the the, the team loves it we appreciate everything y'all do y'all are doing uh thank you thank you for thank keeping you. this no no problem man no problem <laughs> but like i really mean that from the bottom of my heart thank you for keeping this style alive it's really really important and uh, it's it's, it's, it's it's honestly an honor and a pleasure to be able to work on these games yeah. and kind of uh, be in this position where i can talk to folks like you about these games like it's it truly is an honor to be doing what i'm doing and i'm i am happy to kind of carry the flag carry the banner you know for these you know these retro style games you know because you know the retro games that we had as a kid they'll always be there they'll, they'll always, always be, there. be there when we when we want them uh, but i think it's important to keep the spirit alive in a way that still feels fresh and new we gotta preserve um, it and exactly so you know we're like i said I'm, I'm, until if or when the doors close here at Indie Creates, <laughs> we we will keep we will keep doing the thing. Keep Trust do, me on keep, that one. Keep doing it, and uh, <laughs> you obviously do do great things. So, everyone out there in podcast land in Long Island Retro Land, all of you who are fans of us out there, if you if you haven't given the Blaster Master Zero games a shot, do it right now. You can find them. Uh, on mm -hmm. your consoles, just get them, buy them, play them, uh, but don't just stop there. Play everything that Inti Creates has put out because <laughs> it's all great, especially if you're into that whole retro 2D action games. And once again, um, Matt Papa from Inti Creates, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this was a pleasure. And um, just keep in touch with us, man. We'd love to, we'd love to talk yeah, to you again. I, I, I'd be happy to do so. You know, like I said, you know, once, you know, once things you know, become normal again. And, you know, like I said, hopefully the stars can align and, you know, we can uh, come out to uh, Long Island Retro. That would be abs an absolute delight. So thank you all <laughs> once again for listening. Uh, this was, we had Matt Papa here today from Inti Creates and Blaster Master 03 releases on July 29th. That's right. July 29th. So, you know, you could get it and play it and enjoy it. And please, we're going to obviously play it here at Long Island Retro, probably do some streams of it once it comes out. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll fanboy um, if I'm doing the stream myself. <laughs> and um, yeah, so just go out there and play these games. Any Anything, any last words here, Matt? Um, just, you know, thank you to the, you know, you and the Long Island uh, Retro crew for inviting me. It's all, like I said, I, I love doing this stuff. This is this is, I wish I could do this kind of stuff every day. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, I, uh, I had a great time with you guys. Uh, I really hope that, uh, all your listeners out there, uh, enjoy, uh, the games we have to offer. Um, if you want to keep track of what we're doing, um, you can always follow, uh, uh, Inti creates on, uh, social media. We're, uh, at Inti creates E N okay. on uh, Twitter. Uh, if you search Inti creates on Facebook, we're on Facebook too. Great. Uh, so if you want to keep track of what we're doing, that's the best way to do it. And yeah, it's just God, Blaster Master Zero three in just a couple of weeks and uh, Gunvolt three coming next year in 2022. And uh, suffice to say, we got some other really cool stuff in the pipeline. So uh, I think you'll have a lot to look forward to. Very good stuff coming. Very exciting stuff coming. As always, you can follow us here on the internet at LI Retro or Long Island Retro Gaming. Just go do a Google search. We're on all the socials. And we'll be back soon with another episode of the Long Island Retro Gaming podcast. So thank you once again for listening and get out there and play some games, people.
video games. They're awesome. Hey folks, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share us with your friends, and check out liretro.com. We got a ton of great stuff coming your way in the near future. And most importantly of all, play some video games. Like me, right now.